Hi, I'm Chao Wei Huang from the Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine and Frederick Health Hospital. Today we're going to talk about PCI of an LED diagonal bifurcation uh, using the T and protrusion or the tap uh, stenting technique, uh, probably my personal favorite uh, provisional bifurcation stenting technique. The patient is a 70-year-old uh, woman uh, who uh, presented to the ER with two days of crescendo angina, uh, which had progressed uh, to chest pain at rest. Uh, ECG showed entrolateral T-wave inversions uh, concerning for uh, Wellen sign. Echo was normal and uh, troponin remained uh, negative. On cath, the uh, RCA had mild disease. Uh, the circumflex uh, had only minor plaque. Um, the LED is uh, shown and uh, has a severe disease uh, at the LED diagonal bifurcation. Uh, here is another view of the LED. Uh, it looks like the bifurcation is uh, either uh, Medina 111 or uh, Medina uh, 101. Uh, Medina is a, a nice, uh, simple way of uh, classifying uh, bifurcation disease. Uh, you get either one if there is disease or zero uh, if there is no disease. The uh, first number reflects presence or absence of disease in the proximal main branch. Uh, the second number is the distal uh, main branch. And the third number is the side branch. So uh, our initial approach uh, was a uh, provisional stenting strategy. Uh, in uh, provisional stenting, uh, the idea is to only stent uh, the main branch, uh, in, give, in this case the LED, and uh, balloon or stent the side branch only uh, if you have to. Uh, provisional stenting has been shown uh, in multiple studies uh, to have uh, favorable uh, results. So uh, we wire the LED and diagonal fairly easily uh, with uh, workhorse wires. Uh, we uh, pre-dilated the LED with 2.0 millimeter balloon, uh, stented with a 2.5 by 18 millimeter DES, and post-dilated with uh, 2.75 and 3.0 millimeter uh, NC balloons. And uh, here is the result after provisional stenting. Uh, the LED looks great. Uh, the diagonal was patent, uh, but does look a little bit hazy uh, in this view. And uh, looking at it from a different angulation, it's clear that the diagonal uh, became severely pinched at its osteum. So unfortunately, that diagonal branch uh, does bifurcate and uh, covers uh, quite a bit of myocardium. Uh, so we felt that we had to go ahead and stent it. So which uh, bifurcation strategy should we use? Uh, it does seem suitable uh, for T and protrusion or TAP. The uh, T and protrusion or TAP technique is a provisional bifurcation stenting technique uh, in which uh, the side branch stent is placed protruding just slightly into the main branch uh, so that the side branch ostium can be fully covered. Uh, it is best when the side branch is small or when the bifurcation angle is large, although frankly I've gotten uh, very reasonable results for even larger side branches and smaller bifurcation angles. The uh, technique is one of the easiest bifurcation stenting techniques, and hence I am a big fan. It is quick, uh, does not result in loss of wire access to the main branch, and does not leave uh, multiple stent layers or crushed uh, mangled stents uh, behind. Um, however, there is a small neocarina, uh, which can be minimized for larger bifurcation angles or uh, smaller side branches. So uh, here is how you do TAP. Uh, in step one, um, as in all uh, provisional bifurcation stenting techniques, uh, both the main branch and side branch are wired. Uh, and the main branch is stented, uh, which then jails uh, the side branch. In step two, uh, the uh, side branch is uh, rewired uh, through the main branch stent and kissing balloon angioplasty uh, is uh, performed. Uh, in step three, uh, an uninflated balloon is advanced into the main branch and uh, the uh, side branch stent uh, is uh, positioned. Uh, this is actually the most tricky part of TAP. Uh, you have to uh, carefully position the side branch stent in such a way that its proximal edge is lined up with the proximal border of the side branch ostium. Uh, doing this will ensure full coverage of the side branch ostium. In uh, step four, uh, the side branch stent goes up. And note again that the side branch stent protrudes into the main branch only at the distal edge of the side branch ostium. 
In step five, after the side branch stent balloon is deflated, uh, pull it back halfway into the main branch in preparation uh, for uh, kissing balloon angioplasty. And in step six, uh, perform a final kissing balloon angioplasty uh, with the side branch stent balloon uh, pulled into the main branch. And that's it. Uh, kissing balloon angioplasty modifies the angulation of the side branch stent uh, neocarina. And for smaller uh, side branches and larger bifurcation angles, only a small uh, neocarina is left behind. All right, so let's see how this all works in our patient. So uh, we've already done step one. Uh, we've already uh, stented the main branch, uh, the LED. So in step two, uh, we uh, rewired the diagonal branch uh, through the LED stent cell. And as shown here, uh, we performed a uh, kissing balloon angioplasty. Uh, this step uh, dilates the LED stent cell uh, to allow passage of a stent uh, into uh, the diagonal. And the uh, kissing step uh, reduces deformation of the rest of the LED stent. Uh, we next go to step three. Uh, we place an uninflated balloon in the LED and, there, and then carefully position the uh, diagonal stent uh, so that its uh, proximal edge aligns with the proximal border of the diagonal ostium. Uh, you can tell where the proximal border of the diagonal ostium is by looking at uh, where your diagonal stent crosses the outline of the LED stent. Uh, this step uh, ensures a full coverage of the ostium of the diagonal. So next, uh, in step four, uh, which I don't show, we inflated the diagonal stent uh, while keeping the LED balloon uh, uninflated. After that, uh, in uh, step five, shown here, uh, we pull the diagonal stent balloon slightly back into the LED uh, to prepare for a kissing balloon angioplasty. Uh, next, in step six, uh, we perform a kissing balloon angioplasty of the LED and the uh, diagonal. And uh, here is the initial angiographic result after, right after uh, kissing balloon angioplasty. Uh, it already looks pretty good, uh, but uh, we uh, decided to go ahead and do OCT. So OCT showed a slight underexpansion in the LED, uh, just distal uh, to the origin of the diagonal. Uh, there was likely a uh, post-stenotic aneurysmal change there, uh, so we'll need to do a bit more post-dilation with uh, kissing angioplasty. Uh, but the good news is that the neocarina at the LED diagonal bifurcation was very small, uh, probably not more than one cell, uh, stent uh, cell in length. And proximally, uh, the stent looked great uh, with excellent apposition and sizing, uh, so no additional pot step uh, was going to be necessary. So after another round of kissing balloon angioplasty, um, here is the final angiographic result, which we thought was very nice. Uh, there was excellent uh, angiographic outcome in both the LED and diagonal. Uh, the patient went home the next day and at her two week uh, clinic follow-up, she looked great and her angina uh, was completely gone. Okay, uh, take home messages. Uh, the TAP uh, provisional bifurcation stenting technique is usually most suitable for smaller side branches and larger bifurcation angles. Although frankly, I've gotten very good results even for larger vessels and smaller angles. Uh, TAP uses a slight protrusion of the side branch stent into the main branch uh, to get full side branch stent ostium coverage uh, at the bifurcation. Uh, TAP is my personal favorite uh, bifurcation stenting technique because it is quick and easy uh, compared to uh, most other uh, bifurcation techniques. Uh, you keep wire access uh, through the main branch uh, uh, throughout uh, the procedure, and you don't leave behind multiple stent layers or crush uh, stents. Uh, you do leave uh, behind a, a small a neocarina, uh, but that can be minimized uh, for the right bifurcation geometry. Thank you for watching.